Hi right, guys, how are you doing? I'm out today to go and collect some food for the baby newts, the newt larvae that have just hatched from eggs, so they're just hatching at the moment now. Um, so I thought I'd take you with me by video and show you what I do. Um, I'm out on some farmland now, and the way that I found these couple of ponds, what I'm going to be looking at today, um, there's a couple of different ways you can find potential Daphnia ponds. And the way that I found these is by going onto Google Earth. If you go on Google Earth or Google Maps, I even, um, it, when you look at the maps, you can see small blue spots on farmland, and they're likely to be ponds. And you go and have a look at them. Uh, the other way is just you know driving round. Uh, as you go through countryside, you might see ponds at the side of the road and things like that. And we're just talking about little ponds like these. They're not fish ponds or anything like that. These are ponds that will probably dry up in the summertime. So because of that, there's no fish here. Uh, the fish would eat the daphnia, of course, if there's a lot of fish here. So these kind of small vernal pools, as we call them, ones what dry up in the summertime. They're ideal for Daphnia. So you can spot them either just sort of driving round, mooching about, going around and, and looking. I'll look on the maps of these little blue spots and then just go and check them out and have a look. The kind of thing that you're looking for, uh, you want some nutrients in the water. So these ones you can see, they're surrounded by trees. And what you get with having trees all around the ponds is you get a lot of leaf litter in there. You get a lot of pigeons roosting in the trees above and pooing into the water. And this is, uh, it puts nutrients into the water, which the Daphnia feed on. So once you've found a potential pond, the looks like it might hold Daphnia, what you just have to do is go and have a look at it, basically. Some of them you might find when you get there, they're absolutely useless, there's nothing in there for whatever reason. And then others you try, they're absolutely full. The other problem that you have with Daphnia is that the cyclic breeders, they have booms and crashes. So um, one minute they can be having a fantastic, uh, they can be doing fantastic and breeding really well. And then before you know it, they've had a crash and they all die off. And this is the first time that I've been to this pond this year. It's been a fantastic pond for me in previous years, but what is it going to be like now? I don't know. So I've got my nets, just a normal little aquarium nets with a fairly fine mesh. I'll whiz that through the water and let's see what we can find. Now, if you have a look as you go, you can sometimes see the Daphnia in the water. I'm going a bit blind here really, I can't really see anything because it's very dark, but it's that dark kind of nutrient rich water that the Daphnia tend to do well in. Ah, I can see a bit there. So if you see a spot, you know, where it looks like there might be a lot, try and get through those spots. Oh, there we go. Now if we have a look in there, there we go. That's a fairly decent amount of Daphnia. So I'll have a bit of a walk around the pond. I'll see if I can see any areas where um, there's, any, there's any greater numbers of them. Sometimes you can find one area of the pond, there's hardly any, and then you go to the other end of the pond and there's loads. Well, that's not too bad for a start. So I'm using a bucket, fairly decent sized bucket. You can see how brown the water is there when you look at it. Don't cram it into anything really tiny. Um, because if you're going to get quite a lot of it, it needs a bit of space and water. One other thing that's great there, you can see, there's a couple of little twigs and things, but other than that, I can't see anything other than Daphnia. What you want to look out for is things like water boatmen, diving beetles and things like that. And if you see any of those, you have to be very careful not to introduce those in with the, the baby newts, because they will eat. Um, Water boatmen and beetles and things will eat newt larvae. So be very careful of that. But that looks like pure Daphnia and that's just from one dip of the net so far. So that's great. All right, I'm gonna get back in and see if we can get some more. So 
I can tell you now as well, this is the first time that I've waded into a pond for a few months. It was last spring that was, well, last summer that was out here collecting Daphnia. And I can tell you now, I need some new wellies. I've got a wet right foot at the moment. <laughs> Alright, so the, you can see this kind of um, like a figure of eight movement that I use. Being careful not to go right down to the bottom where all the leaf litter and stuff is. You don't want a load of muck off the bottom going into your net. So let's see what we've got in our second scoop. Oh, that's decent. There's one of those water beetles, as you can see in the middle there. So, yeah, just be careful to chuck anything like that out. Don't put that in with your larvae. So I'm getting a decent amount out of this pond. I'm just going to have a look because there's another pond right here next to it. And it can be surprising actually. You can try two ponds right next to each other and they can be really different. Ah, oh, there's some in there as well. That's good. Probably not as much as the other pond. Right, so I've come back onto the first pond again and I've come round to the other side of the pond where I know there was a lot of Daphnia last season when I came. See, I'm just using that figure of eight motion again, making sure I don't go down to the bottom, but also keeping below the surface because if you've got a lot of floating debris sticks and things, uh, you might have duckweed on some ponds. You want to be below the surface so you don't get anything floating but not on the bottom so this uh, this net feels like it's getting quite full actually it feels like I don't know maybe some leaves or something in there let's have a look and oh, no, that's a decent amount of Daphnia you can feel as the uh, as the Daphnia starts to kind of clog up the net you get a bit more resistance in the water and you can tell it's it's getting a bit full That's a decent amount. Let's get that in the bucket. Oh. Now hopefully if I can focus. It's getting a bit more difficult because there's a lot of Daphne in here now. It's difficult to see, but I don't know if you can let me get my net again. If I can show you. Where is it? There we go. Right, there is also. So I've only got that one beetle so far, but I am getting a few of these, which are mosquito larvae. They're absolutely harmless. Uh, they're going to be too big for the hatchling newt larvae to eat. But the newts will eat them when they when they get a bit bigger, or for adult newts or whatever. They're all good food. I suppose if they don't get eaten, you don't really want them hatching out into mosquitoes in your house or anything like that. Not so bad if they're outside, but, but yeah, they're harmless enough to the newt larvae. Just got to keep a close eye out for those predators, beetles and water boatmen. If you get to a point where your water is kind of starting to look like soup, um, it's just gone totally thick and brown with Daphnia, and that's great, but you've probably got enough. But also, you want to stop collecting at that point because, speaking from experience, I remember coming, getting a load of it. I had a, bit, I had a small tub, I had an uh, ice cream tub, I put a load of it in the ice cream tub. Got it home, took me about 20 minutes to get home maybe. And uh, when I got there, it was all dead. So, I don't know what size is this bucket? I don't know how many leases it is, but you can see it's fairly decent size. And that'll be fine in there for half an hour until we use it, as long as it's not overdone. So I hope that was of some use to you. Um, I've got, a few larvae, some Cristata, some Anatolicus, uh, just starting to hatch now, just a few bits and bobs. Um, 
you can get the Daphnia in there before they've even hatched if you've got them in big tubs outside uh, what I actually find is I take my eggs out, put them in big tubs in the garden put them somewhere quite bright and sunny so uh, they develop in the warmth of the sun what, what can also happen with that is you get algae growing in the water, the water can turn green and by putting the Daphnia in there before the newts have even started hatching the Daphnia will filter feed the algae out keep the water clear and reproduce as well while they're in the tub before the newts start to hatch and eat them so yeah it's a good idea to get it in nice and early, I've only got a few couple of bits starting to hatch well this big bucket full kind of kickstart all my tubs so as ever I'll keep you updated with some more videos and things as we go through the breeding season and show you the development of that larvae so you can see what I was talking about here actually uh, these eggs some of them getting close to hatching you can see the water's gone quite green that's because there's no Daphnia in there it's been catching a bit of sun so I'll get some of this in a bit tricky I'm doing this with one hand but just make sure there's no uh, beetle larvae or anything like that in there, any predators. I don't need to put loads in. There we go, that's fine. And that water will soon clear up now with that Daphnia in there. got enough here that I can give some of the growing on juveniles and even some of the adults a treat as well. They will still eat it when they're adult. I don't want to fill them up very much but they seem to like it. This is a sub-adult Anatolian crested newt, Tritorus anatolicus feeding on some of the Daphnia. You can see the Daphnia is really tiny actually compared to the newt, but they do seem to quite enjoy it. And some slavistic Italian crested newts, Tritorus carnifex. Right, so I'm going to get the rest of these fed. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.